place over a mile at 340 elsewhere. Some maidens which historically have provided some pretty good winners, some top level winners, no less. Will we get another one out of this Phillies maiden? Azazat, even money for Dermot World from Boogie Woogie at 7 to 2. Peter O'Hare calling him home. Off and racing in this mile and a quarter Phillies maiden in the early stages. Boogie Woogie and Fla Fest close up. Save the last dance improving in pink. Azazat is close on the outside and also in that leading group is all time great as they settle down. All time great with up on the outside save the last dance. Close on the inner and third is Fla Fest ahead of Boogie Woogie. Star Galaxy next. Azazat is towards the outside in green and red followed by Fancy Gloves. Point to prove has night blue on her inside and at the back of the field is Anora as they head on towards the seven furlong point. Save the last dance, Wayne Lorden on the outside leads by less than a length. Fla Fest, Luke McAteer on the outside is all time great Seamus Heffernan alongside stable companion Boogie Woogie and Ryan Moore. In fifth position, Star Galaxy Dylan Brown McMonigle followed by Fancy Gloves, Rory Cleary, as is at Chris Hayes a couple of lengths then to on the inside, night blue Shane Foley, alongside the red and yellow colours of Point to Prove and Sean Bird. And about two and a half lengths adrift at the back of the field, and Nora, Robbie Colgan as they head on, nearing the five furlong point and the end of the back straight. Save the last dance leads now by over two lengths. From on the inside, Boogie Woogie sharing second spot with Fla Fest, and they're followed by Star Galaxy. All time great nudges along. Behind them is Azazat towards the outside with fancy gloves as they pass the half mile pole and make the swing that'll bring them across towards the straight. Save the last dance in the pink colors, leads by two lengths. Disputing second spot, Boogie Woogie on the inside of Flafest and they're tracked by Star Galaxy, all time great. Is pushed along, making ground around the outside is Azazat as they near the turn in. Save the last dance out in front, chased by Boogie Woogie, Fla Fest around the outside, as is at Star Galaxy, trying to make headway behind them. All time great as weak and night blue stays on, but with over a furling and a half to race. Save the last and still out in front. Chased by Boogie Woogie, as is at with the nose bend on the outside. Star Galaxy behind them in fourth, inside the final furlong. Save the last dance, still leads. As is at and Boogie Woogie both staying on. Star Galaxy back in fourth, but with 50 yards to race. Save the last dance and Wayne Lorden in front will win the opener from stable companion Boogie Woogie second. As is at third, Star Galaxy was fourth. Save the last dance wins Daughter of Galileo 20 to 1. It was an improvement on her debut effort. Wayne Lorden, Aidan O'Brien from Boogie Woogie, second 7-2 and as is that back in third, even money favourite. No doubt the winner was suited by how the race was run. A, a nice ride from Wayne Lorden on that rail as well. And those in behind, notably as is that, just couldn't really uh, pick up. She was probably a bit um, rusty on this occasion. She did keep on, so did the second, but uh, Save the Last Dance was out in front and saw it out well. Joined now by Wayne Lauren, who won the first race today here in great style on the Galileo Philly, saved the last dance. Wayne, well done. Good performance. Thanks. She's a lovely big filly. I rode her on Torless last year, and Torless can be a bit tight, and she's quite big. Mm. Um, she didn't really handle the track great, so she's improved, obviously, over the winter. Um, she stays well, and track like this big galloping track, because she stays extremely well. She did indeed, and once you got to the front, she looked very comfortable. Here, it's pricked for you all the way. Yeah, she was enjoying it. She got into a nice rhythm. She had a big action, and... Um, when I started to go forward, because I thought something might quicken by me, so I started going forward early, but um, she hit the line good. What's the ground like? It was quite holding here Sunday. It looked to be hard ground to make up ground again there. It's soft and it's tacky. It feels actually a little bit worse than what I did here the other day. Probably it hasn't rained maybe last night or what have you, but um, and it's a bit tighter, but it's just, I don't know, she got through it. I know. This race won by above the curve. Tanara was one of the past. How good is this one? I think this is a lovely stay in Philly, so only time will tell. And on that, how good is the Prairie in race too? Has a chance. He ran well in Killarney. He's a horse that'll stay well. Um, I think he'll go underground as well. So then again, he's a horse going to stay well. Hopefully, if I can jump good and ride him forward, he'll, he'll keep going, hopefully. And in a mile made later on, uh, Canute has got the blinkers on. I think he rode him in debut to Curl last year. Yeah, rolls around underneath you a little bit. Um, and he did the first day as well. So I think the blinkers have improved him. He'll handle the ground. Um, so we'll see what happens. Well done. Good start today. Thank you. The Black Tiger, 11 to 4, and easy to back for the next from the Prairie, and 4 to 1 shot. Harsh. Bit of money for Walsingham. Off and racing. 
Mile and a quarter maiden for Colts. The Black Tiger on the outside, Duke Taylor on the inner, waltzing him close behind. Harsh is in touch with alongside the Prairie as they head into the back straight. Duke Taylor goes along in front, followed by Sable Companions, the Black Tiger, and on the outside, the Prairie, improving the maroon and white colours. Harsh takes over in second spot now. Behind that leading quartet is Walsingham. Then Dubawi Delight, new variant. No big deal, and the grey Pinot Gris at the back of the field as they head on. They have about seven and a half furlongs to race. Duke Cater, Seamus Heffernan in the lead from Harsh and Declan McDonough. On the inside, the Black Tiger in blue and orange colours. Ryan Moore in fourth spot, the Prairie Wayne Lorden. Then Walsingham and Chris Hayes. To the outside is Dubawi Delight and Shane Foley, followed by new variant Luke McAteer towards the inner in white. No big deal, last but one under Niall McCullough, and at the back, is Pino Gray and Gary Carroll as they head on with less than six furlongs to race. In the lead, Duke Cader by a length and a half to Harsh in second. Closely followed towards the inner by the Black Tiger with the Prairie to his outside and they're followed by Walsingham. To Bowie Delight a bit closer on the outside in sixth position ahead of New Variant, no big deal. And three lengths away at the back is Pino Gray as they head for the half mile pole and the end of the back straight. Duke Cader still in front. Chased in second by Harsh, then the Black Tiger with the Prairie on the outside. Walsingham is behind them, and then Dubawi Delight as they turn. Over three furlongs to race, they're heading for the turn into the straight. Duke Cater by over a length. Harsh is second. Up on the outside, the Prairie. The Black Tiger pushed along on the inner. Walsingham tracks them in fifth. Dubawi Delight and New Varian, no big deal. A break to Pino Gris as they swing in. With over two furlongs to race, Duke Cater leads. The Prairie up on the outside, Harsh in the maroon and white. Walsingham makes headway in the centre of the course. Behind him on the inside is the Black Tiger. Furling and a half to race, Duke Cader still in front. The Prairie, Walsingham down the outside, ahead of Harsh and the Black Tiger as they pass the furlong pole. Duke Cader tackled now by the Prairie. The Staple Companions fight it out, staying on from the back. Behind them is New Variant, but well inside the final furlong. The Prairie stretching on. It's going to complete a quick double for Aidan O'Brien and Wayne Lord, and the Prairie wins. Duke Cater is second, New Variant, Walsingham, and in fifth spot was Harsh. Wayne Lorden, Aidan O'Brien, and Galileo at the double. The Prairie wins at 7 to 2 from Duke Cader, second at 6 to 1, and New Variant back in third, 22 to 1. The notable disappointment was the Justify Colt, the Black Tiger, who was under the pump a long way from home, just didn't seem to enjoy that. Hopefully better will await. But Prairie was in a good place to challenge as the long-time leader just ran around off the rail. Wayne Lorden had this horse in a nice position, uh, always up there and um, just away from the rail. And fundamentally, he saw it out very well. Very good start of day here at Leopardstown for Trainer Aidan O'Brien with a double in the opening two race. Maybe not what the market quite expected, but two good performances. Nice win with the Prairie there. Well done. Yeah, no, delighted. Um, uh, Fran, uh, he had a run, nice run in... Killarney last year. Uh, Peter actually said it to me during the week about him, and uh, um, he had a lovely run. He, he's bred to get a mile and a half. Uh, he had a, went, had a lovely uh, position on him. Uh, Seamus went an even gallop in front and picked up and galloped home. Uh, Wayne liked him loads, so that was good. Um, Seamus delighted with his horse. He said maybe ride him a bit more patient the next day when he got there. He said he was waiting. So, And uh, then Ryan's horse pulled the muscle in his hand quarters, obviously maybe at the two mark a bit after, but give him a bit of time, hopefully he'll be okay. And he'd love the way this fella, given his Galileo of a guy last following, he was very good once to Penny, began to drop with him. Yeah, exactly, Fran, exactly. Like, he looks like when, like, he obviously got a mile and a quarter very well in heavy ground, so he's obviously going to get a mile and a half well, so, um, and that's what he's bred to get. I think that is um, Montu pedigree, mm -hmm. I think, uh, so, um, no, he's a horse to look forward to. And uh, how big a surprise the first winner to you saved last dance? She looked uh, quite smart in her own right. Yeah, she was working lovely. Her Seth and Seamus's filly were, were working very similar at home. Uh, Wayne's filly was working a bit better than them. But she had two lovely runs last year and uh, obviously handled the ground very well. Uh, was fit and uh, we'll get a mile and a half, Wayne said as well. Very well bred filly as well by Galileo. And, you know, when a Galileo gets a bit between their teeth, they, they will not let it go, you know. So um, uh, Wayne gave her a lovely ride. Uh, um, Ryan was very happy with his filly for her first run back and um, <clears throat> a Seamus filly first time in, in heavy ground just caught her out and uh, hopefully we'll see plenty more from her. 
couple more runners later on. Uh, Canute has got the blinkers on, and Ryan rides uh, Farnborough, who ran really well at Dundalk over seven furlongs back in last year. Yeah, uh, yeah. Farnborough's working the best at home. Um, he's he's uh, he bends his knee a little bit, so you'd hope that he might handle the ground. Uh, he's fit. He's done plenty of work. Um, uh, Canute is working fine, but he's lazy. Um, that's why the blinkers are on him. Uh, he's carrying plenty of weight still, um, but working plenty nice. So hopefully, uh, obviously, we think of the two uh, uh, Ryan's horses that is the better but uh, you never know uh, Wayne's horse the blinkers he's going to step up but uh, we think of the two uh, Ryan's horses the horse well done there thank you pleasure Fran next up first to the handicaps where Crystal Clare was 7-4 to four from Brazil at 5-1 to one. all 16 loaded off and racing Missing the kick, focus required, trails the field in the early stages as they settle down. La Dame Blanche is the early leader, close up. Timurid, also close towards the inside, is Gradulations. Crystal clear, not far off the early pace as they head down the far side. Keen in front, La Dame Blanche leads from Timurid, Gradulations. Dalby up on the outside, Crystal clear. Behind them is Butterfly Garden, starting Monday, has headed, made headway up on the outside. Only for me in mid-division ahead of... New Hill, alongside New Hill is Quizzical and they're followed by Dark Note and Smooth Tom and Brazil. Towards the back in the early stages, Group 1 Power. Also towards the back, Wild Dollar and the overall back markers, the slow starter focus required. As they head on, they have less than seven furlongs to race. La Dame Blanche continues to lead from Timurid, close on the inside only for me in red and yellow colours. Improving now to go second. A two-length break behind the leading trio to Gradulations, followed by Dalby. Crystal Clear next and then starting Monday in Quizzical and Butterfly Garden in New Hill as they continue on towards the five furlong point. The halfway stage, still leading by less than a length. It's La Dame Blanche, close in second only for me and they're followed by Timurid, a couple of lengths then to Gradulations, Dalby and the orange colours towards the outside ahead of Crystal Clear tracking them on the inner. Behind them as they make the far turn with less than half a mile to race. And they're heading towards the straight, starting Monday, edges up on the outside, behind them New Hill and Quizzical, as they head across towards the three furlong pole. La Dame Blanche still in front, closely attended now in the red and yellow by Only For Me, up on the outside Timurid tries to improve, behind them Dalby towards the inside Gradulations, making headway around them starting Monday, creeping into contention behind them on the outer is New Hill, Butterfly Garden and then Quizzical, less than two to race. Timurid comes to tackle La Dame Blanche on the inside. Crystal clear, Dalby starting Monday. New Hill out on the wide outside. Wild Dollar is staying on, but Timurid, the new leader, as they pass the furlong pole. Crystal clear in the centre down the outside. New Hill, Wild Dollar wider still. Well inside the final furlong. Crystal clear getting on top. Timurid over on the far side. New Hill, Wild Dollar down the wide outside. Crystal clear, a winner here on Sunday. Follows up. Wins from Timurid second, Wild Dollar third, New Hill, and La Dame Blanche in fifth. Crystal Clare wins again, 7 to 4 favourite Sean Byrne for John Nallen. Timurid was second at 12 to 1, while Dollar 25 to 1, New Hill fourth, 10 to 1, half a length, the winning distance. Well, this horse was turned out again very quickly after that success last time. Sean Byrne back in the saddle, had the horse in a lovely position. And now, when under the pump, the question was, was the, the win from a few days back going to take its toll? But no, clearly. See the horse pricking his ears at the at the right times, clearly enjoying himself. And even though they're a little bunched up in behind, so he just won that with a bit in hand. Second success here in three days for Crystal Clear. Does it in great style for owner and trainer John Allen, ridden again by Sean Bowen. Well done, John. That was a good performance. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Mighty, mighty. Little horse that we bought to win a maiden in Bell Harbour. He came, <laughs> came a different direction, you know. Mighty. So, like, we bought a couple of flat ones to get Shawnee going and, like, if you, if you want an event pony, he costs half a million. We bought him for 15 grand, like, and he's after winning 45 now, and he's putting the jockey on the road, so it's a dream time. Indeed it is, and uh, it took him a little time to win up in Dundalk, but uh, getting on the grass here has really played yeah, to his yeah, strengths. Yeah, yeah. He was feeling the last night, now, Sean, he said he was just feeling the Dundalk, he was changing his legs, and he said, we didn't know on Sunday coming, but how he'd go on the ground, we were just hoping he would, like, you know, and he jumps holes and he jumps fences, you know, so um, hopefully he'll... Rock on, you know, he's, he's right little horse, great. he came out of bottom at uh, Newmarket last year, the horse and training sale, he, he, was, he hadn't run like, so he's, he's a right little lad, so 
we, when we brought him home, we had him, thought we had him for pint a pint, and then we scored him over fences and all, and we put him up again the rest of the pint, it was like he was kind of bit in the small side, and I said, sure, if he wins, we still won't get paid for him, so we go, we get value for Shawnee rather than going that way. So we have a pint of pint out there for somebody, though, one in, one in, one in inch, so I, I had to come here, but the lads are going to inch, so hopefully we'll, hopefully we'll have one in the evening. What, what's the name of that horse in inch? Manella Blue Way. He won in, won in Bally Ragard a couple of weeks ago, and he, he's in the winners of one today. Now, there's not many runners in there, but hopefully he'll... Hopefully he'll rock on and he'll stay in big, strong, like myself, big, strong, stay in chaser. Stays going, keeps jumping and galloping. So hopefully we, hopefully we get him rehoused now. And back to today, today and last Sunday, of course, we were here last Sunday. For you to have a winner in the flat, I know Sean's your nephew, you're trying to get him going as a rider, but it's a different avenue for you. It's a job, I didn't know anyone. Sure, everyone know me here, I wouldn't know anybody. I would look for the way room over there today, as long as it goes to those here, you know. But sure, like it's mighty, you know. And I say these flat men have a cushy because this fella doesn't do anything, like, you know. There's no one going off school, and we were off school this morning at 7 o'clock with a load of horses. Just give this for a few nuts and give him a pick of grass and away he goes. Different job, it's an easy game. If you can, if you can get up there, they say when you can get there, it's very easy. We have to get there. Well, but it's flat, flat horses are nearly cheaper than point to pointers nowadays. I know, there's great value on the point to pointers still. You get those horses that have been second and third and point to point stuff. And the, look at the national horse, the favourite for national, Noble Yates, he was beaten in a point to point. Uh, Minetta Times beaten a point to point. And Constitution Hill were beaten a point to point. They were all, they were all cheap. They weren't dear horses, like, you know. So, like, you, know, you don't want to be putting your name up on lights. If you keep sticking in underneath the radar, you'll get plenty of value. And they're often ready, those point to point horses. They are indeed ready to go. And uh, on this guy, where are you going to go with him next? Uh, keep running sure, away for so, Sean? But, well, I, I carried out the saddle for him today now. And, and I'd say if he, go, if he rides him over hurdles, I'd have to get a wheelbarrow to carry, <laughs> carry the saddle. But hopefully, we'll get, run him over hurdles. So yeah, he'll be riding the horse, hopefully. You know. Aye, sure, he can, go any, he can go any of those handicaps for the summer for now. he get experience. And once there's a bit of a cut in the ground, away he goes. He yeah, listens. It's been a great couple of days. Mighty, mighty, and he gave him a great ride today. Now, so hopefully, he gets loads of spins out of it. And anyone wants to come down to Manila on the holidays, rock, rock on. We we'll get him down. We we'll look after him. We we'll get him down. Get him down. Brilliant. Listen, well done again. Thanks very much. Thank you. Feature time next up. Homeless song sent off 13 to eight in the end. Buckaroo easy to back. Mia Domina at five to one. All locked away for race four. Off and racing in the Heritage Stakes in the early stages towards the inside Maya Domina is close up with Buckaroo Homeless Songs towards the outside in black and white to her inner is Power Under Me and they're followed in the early stages by Georgeville the stripes of Hotter Than Hades Salt and Stall the outside Helvig Dream held up at the back as they continue on with about six and a half furlongs to race Maya Domina Billy Lee leading by half a length to Buckaroo Oisin Murphy up on the outside a length away Power Under Me Colin Keane down at the back of the field, Georgeville. Georgeville down and Gary Carroll quickly on his feet as they head on past the five. Maya Domina continues to show the way. Tracked a length back by Buckaroo. Power Under Me is towards the inside, then Homeless Songs a couple of lengths to Sultan Stall. Hotter than Hades last but one and at the back is Helvig Dream. As they continue past the half mile pole, the halfway stage and swing to head across towards the straight. Maya Domina by just about a length. Buckaroo close up in second, Power Under Me tracks them on the inside of Homeless Songs. Two lengths away then to Salt and Stall on the outside of Hotter Than Hades. Helvig Dream at the back as they approach the turn in with about two and a half furlongs to race. Maya Domina in the lead, Buckaroo trying to close on the outside. Power Under Me is on the rail, Homeless Songs makes headway to the outside and they're chased by Salt and Stall. Less than two to race. Maya Domina, Buckaroo, Homeless Songs coming there on the outside. Behind them, Power Under Me as they head to the furlong pole. Buckaroo in the centre, Homeless Songs down the outside. Maya Domina still over there on the rail. Homeless Songs comes through to tackle Buckaroo and they fight it out. Maya Domina back in third, less than 100 yards to race. Homeless Songs and on the inside, Buckaroo as they go to the line. Very tight, Buckaroo wins the heritage for Joseph O'Brien. And Oshin Murphy, Homeless Songs second, Maya Domina third, Salt and Stall fourth. Buckaroo wins 5-2. to two. Ashi Murphy, Joseph O'Brien, the colours of Kato Racing. Homeless Songs, second, 13-8. Favourite, Mayor Domina, third, 5-1. to one. A neck, the winning distance. And obviously, thoughts with connections at Georgeville, that horrible incident. This has gone to Buckaroo, who showed real tenacity late on to, to get stuck in and, and dig in off the back of a big old absence. Last seen in the Irish 2000 guineas. Well, as um, picked up, not quite where he left, left off, was disappointing there. But prior to that, was in good nick. A real battle with Homeless Songs, the filly. Uh, she's run OK, but it's gone to the cult. Very good scenes here with Oshie Murphy, the winning rider on Buckaroo, getting photographs. Oshie, I think this horse did. We'll be hearing a lot more of very good performance today. Well done. 
Thanks, Fran. He was really straightforward. He had very nice form last year, and it was lovely to be on him today. Joseph uh, pointed this race out about a month ago, uh, so you know it was a long time planning. And we must um, really thank the team at Joseph O'Ryan's because uh, the middle of last year he was quite sick and. Um, all the staff at Carriganog and the vets did a good job to nurse him back to health because it was looking, um, you know, like it was going to be a real battle. Yeah, and he was very promising last year. Of course, the Irish Giddy is probably not a true reflection of his form. We hadn't seen him since then. He was quite fresh and boisterous in the ring before and plenty of eyes on here today. How was he on the way to the start and in the race? Yeah, brilliant, Tran. Uh, he went to post really sleepy and um, I got... I was slowly away on one here on Sunday, so I didn't want the same thing to happen. And uh, I gave him a little nudge out, and he relaxed in the race. He did indeed. And uh, when the mayor home the songs ranged up, I thought she was going to pick you up. But your horse may well stay further in future. He just seemed out there. Yeah, it was a sit and sprint sort of race. And um, when she loomed up, she's a very good filly. She put up a battle, and I loved his attitude. He switched back to his outside lead and got his ears back and tried hard. And, um, you know, they're admirable qualities. Given the length of time he's been off the track, you think the best yet to come? I hope so. Uh, Joseph did say he had a little away day at the Curra, but an older horse like this is always bound to improve from a race. And for you in Qatar Racing Sills, just back from a suspension, of course, to get a horse like this for them, a nice win, a nice prospect, must be very nice for you. Yeah, they'll be thrilled. He's a homebred, and, um, you know, that makes all the difference. And it was a shame, you know, on Sunday my family came um, and I got beat a short head and it should have won. So, uh, you know, it was nice to make amends today. Winner in Suddle, of course, same colours last night. You've got a couple of interesting rides. Good Friday, of course, for Adam McGuinness, amongst others, at Newcastle. Yeah, it was great that Edo um, taught me. You know, he sends two horses there with uh, chances, and uh, it's an exciting time of year. You obviously start a little bit earlier in Ireland with Guinea's trials and what have you, um, but we'll get going and breaking over the next few weeks, and, yeah, hopefully I'll get on some nice horses. Well on here. Good to see you. Thanks, Fran. Right, maiden time over a mile. Next, Fleetfoot 7 to 4, Farnborough 3 to 1, and Canute 9 to 2. Money for Tipsy Scholars. Off and racing. Slow into stride was number 7, Goethe, in the early stages. Farnborough towards the outside, close up with Tipsy Scholars. They're closely followed by Tetan Sue. Towards the inside in green and white is Harry Stoneless, and they're followed by Charluke. Just ahead of Fleetfoot and behind them in mid-division, Master Dunraven as they continue down the far side, heading on to the end of the second furlong. On the inside, Tipsy Scholars, Farnborough has come over to be a close second. Just behind them is Harry Stoneless in third position, a couple of lengths then to Charluke in fourth. Tetan Sue is next and then Fleetfoot towards the inside is Monitola with the pink cap behind them. Canute on the outside of Master Dunraven. And then a break of about three lengths to St. Faz towards the outside of Beau Pimpernel as they turn at the halfway stage and head across towards the straight. Booyah is towards the back. Also towards the back is Tannery Park. And bringing up the rear is Goethe as they head on, nearing the three furlong pole and the approach to the straight. Tipsy Scholars, Farnborough within a length. And they're followed in third by Harry Stoneless, Char Luke making headway, Fleetfoot improving around the outside. As they swing in with over two furlongs to race, Farnborough's edge in front, Char Luke, and down the outside, Fleetfoot. Behind them, Tipsy Scholars, staying on behind them. In the blue colours is Canute, but with a furlong and a half to race. Char Luke in the centre. The outside is Fleetfoot, over towards the inner Farnborough. Behind them, Canute, and then a break to Monitola. Inside the final furlong. Farnborough, the far side, Fleetfoot stand side, Charluke third, Canute is staying on behind them, 100 yards to race, Farnborough on the far side of Fleetfoot, they fight it out as they go to the line, Fleetfoot on the stand side of Farnborough, it's very tight, it's on the nod, Farnborough on the inside, Fleetfoot stand side, Canute third, and Charluke was fourth. Fleetfoot wins 7-4 favourite Rory Cleary for Jim Bolger, and the colours of Mrs. J.S. Bolger and uh, Frederick Talicki. Farnborough is second, 3 to 1. Canute third at 9 to 2. A short head, the winning distance on the wide outside. You can see on the fresher ground, uh, interesting where they raced here. And uh, Fleetfoot has got into a, a good rhythm and probably wanted every yard of the trip, or, or so it seemed. But the further he's gone, the better he's got. It's just rolled around a little bit late on. Uh, lightly raced this horse and a bigger probably a weight to so get further too. 
seen a very good performance on seasonal debut by Fleafoot getting up in a dying strides to win for trainer Jim Bulger, owner Miss Jackie Bulger and of course Freddie Talicki in a partnership. Well done Jim, good performance. Uh, thanks Fran, yeah. Um, well his form was good last year. Uh, he usually only got mugged by a very good horse and uh, he's, he, he's a better three-year-old than he was a two-year-old so uh, hopefully he'll be back here in September. <laughs> for the Irish Champion Stakes, of course. And uh, Jim, I the worry, or maybe the worry for me pre-race was the ground. He was such a fluent mover last year and even going to start, but he got through the ground well. Yeah, the only worry I had before the race was Freddie. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he handled it well, yeah, yeah. I'd say he'll go on any ground, mm. yeah. And uh, look at him today, he stayed the trip out well. Could you see him out of mile or, as you said, maybe stepping up in trip? Oh, I'd say he'll go all the way, <laughs> trip-wise, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, well done, that's the trainer talk. We'll catch up with the owner, Freddie Talicki. Great to see you here today, Freddie, of course, along with Jackie Bulger. Well done. Thank you very much, Fran. Yeah, great to see you too. I'm absolutely delighted now, delighted. Indeed, and this is a connection goes back a long time for you, of course, with Jim Bulger and the family. Yes, it goes a long time. I was their uh, apprentice back in the day. Um, this was a long, long time ago. Um, i got to say, it was the best school that has ever happened to me, uh, simply because Jim and his team got me ready for life put me on the right road for it and uh, I learned so much there and I'm just so thankful now and grateful that I can give him a little bit back and we have a winner together and this is an exciting horse and um, you know he did very well last year he's improved over the winter now he's a little bit stronger and yeah I gotta say I'm, I'm, I'm delighted about the little things in life but this is far from little Fran let me tell you this this puts a smile on my face now for a long time were you questioning the trainer last year beating three times in maidens were you getting on, getting on to him saying what's going wrong uh, he was getting a bit of stick off me, all right, because I'm not looking for any rides no more. So, yeah, he was getting it. No, uh, look, he bumped into a couple of nice horses, obviously, uh, last year. That form is holding up rock, rock solid. It's so competitive to win races here in Ireland, especially maidens. You know, uh, you're basically taking on group horses in the making, and I'm so delighted that he's put his head in front here today. Talks through the race because it was a big performance. The eventual second was in the front end. He three or four lengths to make up three furlings out on him. Do you know what, Fran? I didn't get to see an awful lot. I was out on the stands enjoying it all. There's a massive crowd here and the whole occasion is just blowing me away. Che che checking out students as usual. I got, I got to look at the replay later on, so there you are. And, uh, Freddie, um, he looks like a horse will improve a lot, both for the run and maybe a step up and trip. Yeah, look, I'm not afraid uh, to step him up and trip either, but I'll be guided by Mr. Bulger here and his team. And look, it's all about today. He's won, and whatever will come in the future, we'll, we'll discuss later on. Great success. Great to see you and your sister Madeline here today, along with the trainer and uh, your partner, of course, Jackie Bulger. Delighted. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. All lies ahead. 130 from Ling Shaw, 9 to 2. Georgetta, 5 to 1. Bit of money for Superior Force. Nice looking heat, this. And they're off. In the spin 1038 handicap over an extended seven furlongs towards the inside transcendental with improving up on the outer high time you won. Also close to the early pace moving through is Majestic Colt who takes over as they near the end of the first furlong. Majestic Colt with Cavallo Pazzo improving on the inside to dispute the lead. They're a little over a length in front of high time you won close up is Georgetta towards the inside transcendental. All lies ahead has made good headway up to join the leaders. They're tightly grouped as they head on with less than five furlongs to race. Majestic Colt goes along in front. Cavallo Pazzo is second. All lies ahead is next. They're followed at this stage by Georgetta with high time you won. Alongside them is Ling Shore and towards the outside as they make the far turn and head across. Superior Force, they're at the halfway stage as they head for the three furlong pole. Majestic Colt in the lead, tracked by Cavallo Pazzo. On the outside, all lies ahead. Georgetta, transcendental, is towards the inside. Ling Shore just behind them. High time you one nudges along. Making headway, the inside is Tory Angel. Around the outer, superior force pushed along. As they head on with two furlongs to race. In the orange colours, Majestic Colt. Over on the far side, transcendental. Cavallo Pazzo between them. All lies ahead down the outside. Looking for a run behind them is Ling Shore. Tory Angel also staying on as they near the furlong pole. All lies ahead the stand side. Majestic Colt in the centre. Ling Shore is staying on between them. Well inside the final furlong. All lies ahead. Ling Shore challenging strongly on the inside. Back in third is Majestic Colt. As they go to the line on the near side. All lies ahead. Far side Ling Shore. Close for third between Majestic Colt and Tory Angel. Good battle up to the line. All lies ahead wins. 100-30 favourite Billy Lee and Willie McCreary.
Lungshaw was second 92 Majestic Colt, third 33 to 1, a neck the winning distance. All lies ahead. Had a, a nice run through in the end and uh, saw it out well from Lingshaw, who looked as though might just get there, but it wasn't to be. Uh, the eventual third was, was out in the open at, at this point, but you could tell it was between All Eyes Ahead and Ling Shaw, and that's a good training performance, All Eyes Ahead. Not seen for some time. Second go in a handicap, job done. Really good performance and a great return to action for All Eyes Ahead, who won readily while battling to win well after a long layoff. Well done, Billy. Thanks, yeah. she done it well, Fran. Um, she travels quite well in her races, even a bit on it. And when she gets there, then she's not doing a whole lot. I've had to get serious for the last 100 yards, but she's picked up and went away again, which I thought is hard doing in this tacky ground. So, pleased with performance. Like, she's down to... She ran well off 80 last year. She's off 77, so we thought she had to have a good chance off, off that today, and it proved it, but we hopefully there's more to come. Yeah, indeed, and our last run, of course, very good at Gorham Park, but uh, today we're cutting the ground. Connections, late start to Furrow last year. She's five now, hopefully hoping there's more to come. Yeah, exactly. Like, she, she was only maturing then, you know, so she took all that time. Like, even the Gorham run last year, the first three home, were a first three in the van all the way. It just happened to be one of those days in Gorham. The pace was holding up, so it was a good run. Um, we were confident that she'd, she'd go across there and think that she'd won. You're happy to be wide, but I presume it's a balancing act between not being on Sunday's ground and keeping on the edge of the fresh ground. Yeah, it was a little bit early on, but then the boys moved in a bit, so I was just on the edge of the fresh ground today, so that was a help. Plenty more to come. Is she very ground dependent or running Gorham Park was decent ground? Yeah, no, I think she'd go on good ground. It's just she handles the ground well, and uh, no, I think she's one that'll go on any ground. Well done. Thanks. Penultimate contest, Pulse of Shanghai 9-2 from Roquetois and Lise Maria at 5-1. to one. Off and racing for the ITBA Next Generation Handicap over an extended 7. Close up in the early stages, so unique, taking a keen hold towards the outside leads. Barnhill Rose is close on the inside. Sinead Shekin is close to the early pace with Magyar. On the inside, Rocket 12, not far off them towards the outer is Pulse of Shanghai with Cheeky Peak to his inner. As they head on to the end of the second furlong, so unique to the outside, leads the way, Declan McDonough, followed by Maggie Rory Mulligan moving through into second, Sinead Shekels, Robert Wearty, and on the rail, Rocket 12, Andy Slattery, this leading quartet, followed to the end of the back straight by, as I said, with Barnhill Rose as they pass the half mile pole and make the turn that brings them across. On the approach to the straight, still going along in front, but only narrowly, so unique with moving through on the inside, Rocket 12, Sinead Shekels in, in third spot as they pass the three and approach the turn in. Rocket 12 has taken over on the inside of So Unique. They're followed by Sinead Shekels. As I said, making headway around the inside is Patrick Street. Behind them, Barnhill Rose, driven along, trying to close on the outside, Pulse of Shanghai, wider still, Blue Peak. Less than two furlongs to race, spread across the track in the white, with the white face in the centre. Rocket 12, tackled by, as I said, over on the rail is Patrick Street. They show it in front of Barnhill Rose, a break then to Lisa Maria, but inside the final furlong on the, in the centre, as I said, over on the rail is Patrick Street coming home well, stand side Barnhill Rose, right between them is Rocket 12 with 50 yards to race. As I said, and Gavin Ryan with the narrow advantage, as I said, will win it. From Patrick Street, second, Barnhill Rose, third, and a break of a few lengths to Rocca 12 in front of Lisa Maria. As I said, wins at 20 to 1 for Gavin Ryan and Pat Murphy in the Tidery Road Syndicate. Patrick Street was second, 12 to 1, Barnhill Rose back in third at 6 to 1. We'll start with the third because the shortest of those that were placed, just the further Barnhill Rose went, the more likely it looked. But ultimately, producing a finishing kick at this point and just running around a bit, then it just seemingly runs out of steam at the end. And the winner was the one that, that kept straightest for longest, just sitting a couple off the rail. That's where the winners have come generally and saw it out best. Last up, Theophilus was 7-2 to two favourite for a nine furlong handicap. Never find another U13-2, to two, as was Numidia. Off and racing in the finale, the live music after racing handicap over nine furlongs. Out on Friday, the early leader with Nevada Brave close up towards the outside in blue headgear. Wayne or Walker, Tara Power tracks them towards the inside there, followed by Never Find Another You and Tashim and Numidia in mid-division ahead of 
Farnese and the outside Far Coral. And they're followed by the green and white colours of Ernest Loring as they head on past the seven. Out on Friday goes along in front for Killian Leonard, closely attended in the maroon and white by Nevada Brave and Jack Cleary. A length in front of Wayne R. Walker towards the outside, Niall McCullough. Close up in fourth position, the inner is Tara Power. With Gavin Ryan as they continue on, about five and a half furlongs ahead of them now. Out on Friday, Nevada Brave, Wayne R. Walker, Tara Power, never find another U. Tasham and Numidi are next, Farnese behind them, Ernest Loring. Then the blue and yellow checks of Selective Power. As they continue to the end of the back straight, behind them is Bringsty towards the outside, Fire Carl, the final trio. Theophilus in the centre, towards the inner is Gentleman Jimmy, and with them towards the outside, Gudrun Genberg. As they head now with three and a half furlongs to race, they're on the approach to the straight. And out on Friday, continues to show the way, closely followed by... Nevada Brave, Wayne or Walker is towards the outside, Tara Power making headway towards the inner. Along the extreme inside is Numidia, and they're chased to the straight by an improving Brinksty in orange colours around the outside. As they straighten up, they have less than two furlongs to race. In the centre, Nevada Brave with Tara Power, Numidia over on the rail. Never find another U with the white face down the outside is Brinksty, this quintet clear. Heading to the furlong pole, Nevada Brave would never find another U, Brinksty, and over on the far side, Numidia. Ford across the track inside the final furlong, and Brinksty has come through to lead on the stand side under Colin Keane. Never find another U in second as they go to the line. Brinksty will win it from never find another U second, Nevada Brave third, Numidia and Theophilus. Brinksty wins, Colin Keane, James McCauley in those colours, 17-2, to two, never find another U second, 13-2, to two, Nevada Brave third, 10-1. to one. Two and a half lengths, the winning distance in the end. This was all about Colin Keane being in the right place and backing his horse to stay on and score. It seemed as though we did have one winner up, up, up the rail earlier on, didn't we? But as the day progressed, you, you wanted to be a little way off it. That's where Colin Keane was, and he's produced a horse at the right time to extend by further than it looked at at one stage, by a, a very comfortable margin in the end. Winners then at Leopardstown. Well, the feature went to Buckaroo. Really nice performance off the back of a big old absence. Was easy to bat mine beforehand. Every chance he'll come on uh, for that. For Oshie Murphy's third ever career success in Ireland. All three at this track, five to two. Uh, the Maidens went to Save the Last Dance and Wayne Lorden. Then the Prairie and Wayne Lorden, both for Aidan O'Brien and for Galileo. And uh, we also had Fleet Foot win nicely for Jim Bolger, the seven to four favourite. All lies ahead, another winning favourite. 100 to 30 and another 20 to 1 winner in the form of As I Said. Really good day's action here for Student Day at Leopardstown. We've seen a huge crowd enjoy some fabulous.